Whew. Hard landings. Let's go. Pam pam. Hello, my friends, and welcome. My name is Dennis, and as you probably know, I'm the Boeing 737 captain. Yes, today we are going to speak about the hard landings. I used to be the ATR pilot and I'm now the 737 pilot so I will speak about those types in particular and also speak about the hard landings in general. And the first thing I want to say about is if you heard from a passenger that they experienced the hard landing during the flight in 99% of the cases it is not the hard landing they experienced just the firm landing the firm landing is absolutely okay it is safe way of landing the airplane yes we like the soft landings but the soft landings are not always safe there are so many factors that may influence your landing style like weather conditions airplane type your pilot experience and many many more to speak in general we need to draw something here the lift force formula my friends it is very crucial for our topic today that is why i will leave it on this board for the rest of the video in this formula we have lift itself the lift coefficient basically the function of angle of attack and the wing shape i would say wing shape the density of the air, the airspeed and the surface of the wing. To land the airplane on the safe speed we need to reduce it compared to cruise speed. So that is why we extend the leading edge flaps and the trailing edge flaps. So we increase the surface of the wing but we reduce the airspeed keeping the lift force constant and also we can modulate with angle of attack which is the function of the lift force component so that is why we can control the lift force on a safe airspeed i'm not good at drawing but let's say this airplane has exactly the same characteristics as boeing 737 and g for the typical airspeed and standard flap setting on boeing 737 the pitch of the airplane is never negative so you still need to keep around well it depends on the airplane modification 800 900 600 700 it depends on flap setting but usually it's like between two dash four degrees it is like in the flight crew training manual i use the same picture so you may see it uh, here as well so it is a great thing to have the positive pitch on boeing 737 not only on boeing 737 but on most of the jet airplanes so you have the positive pitch during the approach and landing and you'll never hit the ground with your nose gear if you calculated your airspeed correctly I mean we ref target speed etc on ATR it's the other story where your pitch is negative so you really need to flare the plane otherwise you'll hit the ground with your nose gear you need to touch down the ground with your main landing gear here even without the flare action you touch down like that so why do we really need to flare the boeing 737 for example because it has the positive pitch already we need to minimize the vertical speed my friends let's say your airspeed equals ground speed and you fly with a 150 knots 150 knots so for that airspeed the vertical speed let's say the vertical speed is around 800 feet per minute it's quite high my friends 800 feet per minute you'll have probably the hard landing not probably i am almost sure about it that you will have the hard landing. you need to minimize that to minimize you need to flare so you just flare that airplane for like three degrees usually not more to make the angle between four if you fly like a two you need to make like four up to seven degrees of pitch we also need to reduce the engine thrust during the flare process and to compensate the loss in the lift force we actually increase the angle of attack so we need to catch the point 
where the vertical speed reduced was reduced down to let's say 200 feet per minute and there we can touch the ground with it so we like basically guessing where to flare so we can flare this is the runway so we can flare at this height and there we can, may lose the airspeed down to touchdown speed or if you flare high you may lose your airspeed quite high and then and then the airspeed will drop lower and lower finally you may lose your airspeed and make you'll have the hard landing with it okay so here the proper action is to add some thrust if you have enough runway available you can like undo this high flare flare a little bit and fly a little bit further and make a safe landing if you have the short runway it's better to go around and try again so you need to guess as a pilot you need to actually practice the flies practice the landings on your airplane type because every airplane type is different the flare high is different for every kind of airplane for Boeing 737 I usually start flare at 40 feet as for me and I finish it of course I finish it at touchdown but I gradually uh, pull up pull up just a little bit before the touchdown reducing of course the thrust if you flare late you'll have this profile so you will not have this reduced uh, vertical speed that you need to have upon your touchdown so here's the hard landing here if you lose the airspeed there's also hard landing possible the flare profile depends on many factors like airplane weight so inertia of the airplane the engines is told on the airplane airplane type as i say the weather conditions outside factors and many more but with your experience with your daily flights no worries you can you will be able to flare properly and land the airplane properly but the main reason for Boeing 737 hard landings is not the early flare is not the late flare it is the high airspeed during approach and wrong thrust management bum, bum. let's speak about the spoilers that we have on the wing of Boeing 737 we have some of the flight spoilers and also ground spoilers the ground spoilers we need to kill the lift force after touchdown because we don't need our aircraft to bounce we don't need it to fly anymore we need to decelerate the airplane and stop it we need the flight spoilers for the similar reason but in flight so by extending the speed brake in flight we destroy some of the component of the lift force increasing the rate of descent if we see that we are higher than the profile so on a ground they work together the flight spoilers extend together with the ground spoilers increasing the surface of the panel probably you saw this panel the panels if you've flown as a passenger on any kind of jet airplane and here are the conditions for the spoilers to deploy after touchdown i didn't mention it here but also you need to arm the speed brake during the approach phase it's the normal procedure and also it is mentioned in landing checklist also the radio altitude should be 10 feet or less the wheel spinning should be more than 60 knots any landing gear should be compressed and the thrust levers both thrust levers should be retarded to idle that is why on airbus you may hear retard retard on boeing we don't have it but you need to retard the thrust levers to idle this is very 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 important thing on boeing 737 and later you'll understand it so for the landing gear compression any landing gear should be compressed and flight spoilers will extend but only right main landing gear compression will lead for the ground spoilers to extend why am i speaking about the spoilers because it's very important for our topic today and later you'll understand everything and let's speak about the wrong method of the soft landing that actually leads 
to the hard landing. I call this method wrong soft landing, where pilots maintain the higher than calculated airspeed for approach. I heard the case then pilot, not in our airline, but I heard the case then pilot maintained target speed plus 15 knots. So not VRF plus 15, but target plus 15 and the wind was calm. Um, yeah, I heard this case from one of the investigation uh, videos on YouTube. Um, so if you maintain high speed, if you do not select thrust levers to idle, as usually it's between, you start to reduce at uh, 30, 20 feet, you start to reduce the thrust levers uh, to idle smoothly. If you do not do it, you can more easily control the airplane during this flare maneuver because you are keeping a uh, lift in that case and you can gradually uh, reduce it upon landing and touchdown. So your landing, of course, will be smooth. If you use the high speed, of course, you, you may overfly some part of the runway, quite long part of the runway. So no one will use this technique in case the short uh, landing in the case of landing on the short runways but if you have four kilometer runway on Hurghada I think maybe someone may try this uh, uh, technique like I said wrong soft landing technique and let me draw you so you are flaring and you're flying you're like floating also in Boeing 737 you have the ground effect that helps the airplane to float so this ground effect actually keeps the lift upon the touchdown so you're flaring and you reduce some thrust levers and you hit the idle and you touch down but sometimes pilots who use this wrong technique they do not reduce the thrust levers to idle and the airplane touches the ground with thrust levers higher than idle if you won't put the thrust levers to idle, you will not have the spoilers. So you'll have almost the same lift on your touchdown as on approach because the airspeed is high, no spoilers, nothing. So we need to kill, we need to kill the lift to destroy it after the touchdown. So that is one of the conditions. And that's the great possibility for aircraft to bounce because after the touchdown the airplane just uh, puts the tail a little bit downwards increasing the pitch so the angle of attack also increased so the lift increased because we are maintaining the high speed so the possibility for airplane to fly again and bounce is very high guys let's admit that we are in this condition so we were maintaining the high approach speed we touched the ground with thrust levers not at idle and we now bounce wow oh my god what to do let's put the thrust levers to idle but that will bring us to the hard landing for sure why because we touched down the ground so the landing gear compressed right we touch down the ground so we have the wheel spin because it rotates already we touch down the ground the array well it's below 10 feet and we put the thrust levers at high though here we have the wing so it's our wing with the spoilers deployed what will happen to the lift force it will be killed so the airplane will fall down to the ground with a hard landing and here you may read about the bounce landing recovery if higher denial thrust is maintained through the initial touchdown the automatic speed brake deployment may be disabled yeah because uh, the thrust levers are not at idle even then the speed brakes are armed these can result in bounce landing during their resultant bounce if the thrust levers are then retarded to idle automatic speed brake deployment Deployment can occur. This results in loss of lift and nose up pitching moment, which can result in a tail strike or a hard landing and subsequent touchdown. On a subsequent touchdown. So, as you can see, all the information I told you, you may find in flight crew training manual. And now I will fly the flight simulator and show this condition to you. Bum bum.
All right, guys. Here we go. This is X Plane Eleven Flight Simulator and the Boeing 737 Zebo model. Quite a detailed model, but not the real airplane. However, I fly this particular airplane in real life, the Boeing 737 NG800, and I had to maintain the standard speeds, even a little bit less than standard, because if I will maintain the high speed to perform the high speed landing technique this airplane would just bounce and fly away to the skies like several dozens meters high so i don't like this this physics is unreal but let me just show you the condition for the most of the hard landings on boeing 737 ng let's go i'm a little bit lower than the glide slow because i have very sensitive joystick and well pause at some critical points so the pitch is okay a little bit higher than usual because i maintain the low speed for this one so we have the touchdown but we don't have the uh, spoilers as you can see no spoilers no speed brakes nothing so here are the ground spoilers here and over here as well here are the flight spoilers and as you can see nothing nothing the landing gear compressed and the wheel spin occurs we'll see more closer right more closer to the wing from this spot so we'll have bounce landing bouncing again and here i put the idle thrust right and i don't know why we have just the fly spoilers here i need also the ground spoilers if the ground spoilers extend they will provide huge huge drag and of course they will create a huge vertical speed so here we have very dramatic condition when our pilot selected the idle thrust after the first touchdown here we have the bounce landing and also the pilot flares the airplane up so here we have the risk for the tail where very, the tail is very close to the ground as well as uh, we have the high vertical speed right now so we'll have the hard landing for sure what to do in this case just to uh, go around my friends no other way because we will have the tail strike afterwards probably or the hard landing so just go around and the airplane may touch again may touch ground again but not with that vertical speed if you select the uh, full throttle on full thrust full go around thrust of course the speed will increase the airspeed will increase and you'll have some pitch moment that you need to counteract and also you will not touch down very very hard you'll just go around from the touchdown but here we're just floating and boom the second touchdown the tail is very low and it's very critical so here we have the hard landing scenario i don't know why we don't have the ground spoilers so far where are they i need ground spoilers oh there's a zebo model and yeah, i pulled a little bit hard just to show you the tail strike condition for you to see the pitch angle of the airplane here we have the tail strike so very very risky uh, if you don't put the auto thrust on the touchdown just before the touchdown so auto land actually start flare maneuver at starts flare maneuver at 50 feet and after that it gradually retard the thrust at 27 feet so i try to do like that i just start my flare a little bit later like 40 feet just little by little and reducing the thrust and monitoring the speed so in this condition i didn't reduce the thrust for the airplane and you may see what had happened to it very very interesting all right it was the condition for the hard landing of boeing 737 but what is the hard landing well according to the flight crew operations manual for boeing 737 and for etr as well if you have the flaps extended the load factor should be between zero and two g's g's like this if you have the flaps extended all right so we are i'm now experiencing one g so i my weight is 
nearly 100 kilos. If my weight increases two times, it should be 200 kilos. So absolutely, if you have this strong landing, you will feel it, my friends. You will feel it for sure. Yeah, it's 2G, not 26. And usually you may find the information about the load factor in CDU of the airplane. About the Boeing 737, on some modifications you may find this information, on some no. On ATR you may find it on every ATR 72600 from what I know. And actually in our Boeing 737 flight crew operations manual, the pilot is responsible to give the information for the technical staff whether he or she experienced the hard landing. Actually from one side it's the good thing but the technical staff, the maintenance staff, they have the other documents with precise numbers. I got this page from uh, aircraft maintenance manual A AMM and as you can see the maximum uh, load for the Boeing 737 for the highest inspection level is 2.2 G's and here on the bottom we also have the roll angle in degrees so for example if you land it with the roll of 6 degrees the, with a G of 1.6 it's as much as 2.2 landing on a, with the wings level so still will be inspection held if you land with it with the bank with the high bank because uh, the stress for one landing gear even with this low load factor is quite high and this is again from the aircraft maintenance manual that shows what to do for the maintenance personnel so basically the conditions for the hard landing you can pause and read but the main thing for us is uh, that you go to the phase two where you actually disassemble the engines and uh, do everything only if the damage is found. So in case even you are um, out of this threshold, from what I can see, the CG load factor higher than the threshold, yes, uh, do the phase, do the check some kind of check I don't know if I think it's a uh, 1B check is not the same as 1A check so probably you need to disassemble something so here's 1B in here's on the left 1A probably it's yeah, of course it's different but for stage 2 where you can actually need to remove the engines so to see the engine mount you only do in case of damage was found so here damage was found no you can go to the uh, service you can return the airplane to service again during the inspection damage was found no go to service so phase two only in case damage was found damage was found damage was found yes do the phase two phase two the aircraft will be grounded for several days for sure and of course that will cost lots of money for the company and that is why the main point of this video is to show you that you need to follow what instructors tell you what documents uh, tell you and everything so don't even listen to me if you want to work for some airline uh, study the airplane you want to fly study their documents their procedures etc so they are very crucial and very important as you can see and of course good experience will bring you to the proper level of uh, flying bum, bum. on atr it's a little bit other story where the load factor the maximum load factor depends on aircraft landing weight i wasn't able to find this table in the internet but i saw it myself and it looked like this so the aircraft weight and the g load the maximum g force and the graph was like this probably from what i can remember and here is the g's are the g's here's the aircraft weight so the lower the weight the higher is maximum g load for the condition so here for example i 
so three with something g's for the empty weight for maximum weight it's 2.1 or something it's the limit for the maintenance action to be done to check the airplane systems and airplane construction speaking about Ryanair my friends probably I'll have lots of comments under this video about Ryanair but there are some of the reasons why maybe they have more hard landings than any other airline the first reason is this airline is constantly expanding uh, I don't know about nowadays because we have aviation crisis everywhere but it used to expand its fleet and that is why they took young pilots they, they were taking young, young pilots all the time and yes then you train pilots you need to train them in real life conditions and they do mistakes it's normal and at some point you let them do mistakes so yes they will have firm landings not the hard landings they'll have firm landings and maybe occasionally hard landings occasionally one more reason they fly to secondary airports with quite short runways some of the runways that they fly are shorter than 2000 meters and of course they will never use this high speed technique as i told you so they will just aim to the landing uh, the landing marking and they will touch down safely again but firmly sometimes of course occasionally hard landings again reason number three and it is very simple they have many routes and many planes and many more passengers to film the landings so yes they have more stuff happening in their airlines that is why everyone says about the Ryanair that they have hard landings no they have firm landings hard landings just occasionally in percentage just in any other airline my friends I hope you like this video guys I want just to confirm something with you I know well someone told me that you are probably awesome but I'm not sure for that please follow the awesome guy checklist just to confirm it all right so first just press the like second subscribe to my channel and the third item ring the bell whatever it means thank you very much for your attention for watching this video and have a great time subscribe to the channel ring the ring the bell whatever, whatever. ring the bell whatever whatever it means Ring the bell, whatever it means. <sighs> bum, bum.